good afternoon the sensex has breached the 75000 mark for the first time this week india's strong economic growth outlook amid expectations of rate cuts healthy corporate earnings and prospects of political stability after the lok sabha elections have kept the underlying sentiment positive moreover the growing might of retail investors is also a factor behind domestic markets resilience amid global headwinds millions of investors have entered the fray since the pandemic the total number of dmat accounts increased to 139 million in december 2023 with 4.2 million accounts added in december alone so how resilient are our markets and what kind of caution should investors look out for to discuss this we have one of the finest commentators on the stock markets a person whose views are much sought after mr nilesha managing director kotak mahindra asset management company he needs no introduction to anybody who is tracking the stock markets he prefers to call himself a student of the market uh, as is evident from his twitter uh, uh, this, this description but all of us consider him as a master uh, of the markets uh, mr shah let us start with the more uh, and recent MG, news and mg if i can add uh, he is also advisor to the prime minister on the capital markets and uh, many of the things uh, happening globally so that adds to his uh, valor although you know model code of conduct is there and you know since he is a, a part time member of uh, the advisory council he may not be able to you know say this so we can say on his behalf Uh, that his advice is taken seriously even by the prime minister of the country excellent so i would like to know from you you know um, when the markets reach this particular landmark in of 75000 it's been a long long journey uh, and uh, for those uh, of you who have been uh, involved with the markets for several decades uh, how do you see this and uh, how do you how, what does it convey about the robustness of the capital markets because investors today would like to know that i mean how sustainable is you know, whatever we are seeing or uh, or is it that you know we need to be always cautious about the volatility that is there so your export comments so one this is like a dream come true we were talking many years ago that there will be tsunami of retail flows into indian market now we are seeing it we were always talking that one day indian markets will be driven by its own fundamentals and not by what foreigners will buy and sell today we are seeing that and in last 8 years market has consistently hit all time high in cricket sir donald bradman is the greatest batsman with six consecutive centuries so our sensex is doing better than sir donald bradman now we must remember that with 99.94 average sir don was also out about eight times on duck so can our market score a duck once in a while answer is undoubtedly yes as investor you need to be prepared for it we hope and pray that never happens but you need to be prepared for it but what do you think is uh, driving this kind of buoyancy you know when if there is largely gloom in the domestic in, in the developed world which we had discussed in the in the forenoon also uh, you know india seems to be a bright spot when it comes to this um, at the same time uh, we we keep hearing about overvaluation in the market too so what is the real story so our markets are driven today by triveni sangam of flows sentiments and fundamentals uh domestic flows are very strong sip numbers are about 19000 crore a month on top of it insurance and pension are also investing foreigners are also looking to buy at lower level of market despite higher valuation so from a flow point of view we are in a reasonably good position sentimentally also now indians are far more confident about their growth and future 
and so is foreigners. And as you very correctly mentioned, we are doing well, but others are doing badly. So we look even better than what we are doing compared to others. And finally, it is the fundamentals which matter. Yes, markets are at all time high level, but our profit to GDP ratio at about 5% is also near all time high. And which is why valuation wise, we are not at all time high. Now, is there a froth in market in certain segments? Undoubtedly, yes, in our opinion. There are a couple of low floating stock counters where valuations look exorbitant. And uh, they may not correct today or tomorrow, but certainly whenever supply emerges in those counters, current prices will be unlikely to be remaining there. So we have Triveni Sangam of flows, sentiments, and fundamentals coming together to create market which has gone up eight calendar years in a row. It is probably world record in any capital market. Uh, I'm, I haven't studied this in details, but I think it will be a world record in any capital market giving consecutive eight years of positive return. And uh, Nilesji, since I'm coming from Delhi, so I'll be adding a political tadka to the conversation, how much, you know, this 75,000 euphoria, if we may call it, uh, has this upkeep uh, uh, par has to play with it? You know, do people think that, uh, uh, have they discounted, you know, the political risk? Uh, and they are also part of uh, uh, the political jargons thrown by the political parties. So undoubtedly market is discounting all the current news and future probabilities. And at this point of time, it will be fair to say that markets are optimistically discounting continuity of government with majority. It is discounting Fed rate cut, despite Fed saying that we may not cut rates. It is discounting oil prices to remain in 75 to $80 a barrel, despite current prices running high. And it is also discounting nifty earning per share of about 1125, 1150 rupees. So market is today positively discounting lots of things, including continuity of government with majority. But do you think that, uh, you know, this burnout may come, you know, uh, in nearer future rather than in a long term side? A lot will depend upon how world behaves. If energy prices go to triple digit, yes, there could be small correction. But history has taught us that higher oil prices are actually reason for lower oil prices because people control demand. Uh, Fed may not cut rates today, but will they be able to sustain higher rates for longer? That remains doubtful. Uh, we are doing well and others are scoring self goal. Now, will that continue? That's one big question mark. Today, as an emerging market investor, you are not going to invest in Russia. You are very, very concerned about South Africa. You are worried about China doing something in Taiwan. So both China and Taiwan are on tenter hooks. Uh, South Korea has a risk of getting upgraded into developed markets because it is a developed country. Effectively, your choices to invest in emerging markets are very, very limited. And as some fund manager mentioned, uh, I have top three priorities to invest in emerging market. One is India, second is India, third is India. And Larry Summer summed up this entire thing very, very nicely, that Japan is like an hospital, all elderly people. China is like a jail. You have one way ticket to enter, but you don't know when to come out. And Europe is like a museum. Everything is in tick. Effectively, where will you go and invest? Uh, you know, this euphoria and the global scenario which you were describing. So India is also probably trying to take the leverage of the situation. And uh, a few days back, we have heard that uh, we are also amending uh, or agreed with Mauritius to amend uh, the double taxation avoidance accord. 
and Mauritius DTA is very peculiar in uh, uh, structure that Singapore DTA is also linked with it. Uh, we all understand that uh, India wants to build a, a gift city and gradually we are uh, cutting down on many of the leverages which we had in, uh, in the DTA. I want to understand from you that, you know, what sort of impact do you see? Now we already have, you know, seen four or five years of uh, taxing the capital gains in India, uh, despite the fact that people come through Mauritius route. Uh, now, uh, withholding tax and dividends, they are also, uh, you know, the provisions will be amended. So what sort of uh, impact uh, do you see on the hot money, uh, especially because most of the hot money which comes through it? And uh, what sort of impact do you see in the FDI side? And thirdly, since, you know, you don't want to mention about the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, but, you know, I am a bit greedy. I want to understand that what sort of, uh, uh, you know, geopolitics uh, you see, uh, especially, you know, we are cutting one sort of revenues for Mauritius, and we already have problems in Maldives, and we are struggling to deal with it. So these are the three aspects I want you to cover, please. Sure. So just one clarification, all these comments are as Nilesha individual, not as member of ESCPM because of model, model code of conduct. I have given the uh, rider that I am greedy. Yes. So you, you need not to have it. So one, there is a Gujarati proverb which says, Gharna chokra ghanti chate ne upadhyay ne ato. Uh, we will starve our own kids and give floor to the visitor. That probably describes our treaty with Mauritius and other countries. The double taxation treaty gave advantage to people coming via Mauritius rather than directly coming into India. We have sustained this for a many, many decades. And now we are trying to create a level playing field. I think that's a step in the right direction. If India has to emerge as a regional financial center, as international finance center, then there can't be non-level playing field where people coming via Singapore, Mauritius gets tax advantage or other benefits and coming via gift city, they don't. Otherwise, why will anyone come into gift city? Now, at the same time as Big Brother in Indian Ocean, do we have to take care of our neighbors? Answer is undoubtedly yes. But is the benefit to the neighbors by way of giving preferential treatment on taxation? Or it can be via creating a win-win situation where we go and invest in their countries and create growth. Now, Mauritius is strategically located we can create a mundra over there, which will provide logistical trans harbor shipment to whole of Africa and Asia. Uh, Mauritius is also an agro uh, country processing sugar and stuff like that. We can put up agro processing industry over there and create a win-win situation. I think from win-lose, if we create win-win, not only our neighbors will be happy, but we will also benefit. So my two sum will be, uh, we need to create a level playing field between global finance centers and local finance centers. We need to extend our influence through foreign direct investment and creating a win-win situation rather than creating a win-lose situation. Okay, uh, Mr. Shah, you know, your Twitter uh, description also has another interesting thing apart from being a student of the markets. It also says mutual fund sahi hai, you know. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, true to that word, I think uh, uh, investors have largely uh, put their trust behind it. The assets under management of the MF industry in India is, I think it's doubled in the last four years. It's around 50 lakh crore. So I would like to, you to talk about something about the industry, some of the, the new products that you are sort of looking at, and um, you know uh, how much going by the trust that you know investors have been largely putting behind it, how sustainable is you know whatever that we are seeing as far as the industry is concerned. So Arun, we all believe in mutual funds. Sahih hai. 
partly because we work in mutual fund industry and partly because we genuinely believe it is sahi hai for investors based on our experience our business is business of managing trust and it is very sad to note that we haven't earned every indian's trust despite last 30 years work if you look at households financial sector flows between fy 21 and 23 about 9 lakh crore has gone into currency notes and 4 lakh crore has come into mutual funds an asset which would have delivered about 20 25% return in that 3 year period has got half of what currency notes have got which is going to depreciate by definition so i have a long long way to go and gain trust of every indian even today there are many indians who are investing in currency notes rather than mutual funds why do we believe mutual funds sahi hai well i have friends like rajiv and shrini they are managing money wisely they are generating good returns for investors and as long as we will have talent like that in managing money and guardrail of sebi in terms of regulation i think will continue to add value to our investors and as long as we add value mutual fund sahi hai nilesh i have a supplementary to this you know i am i was reading data uh, somewhere that uh, india is now largely uh, witnessing passive investments you know people are investing into indices rather than uh, investing into direct stocks um you know uh, there are company like zero da you know we have they have 100% uh, passive investor fund house do you see this as a new trend emerging or do you think that there are lesser uh, you know availability of asset classes where people can invest so that's why they are looking for passive investments or do you think uh, that uh, there are uh, you know more retail investors coming who may not uh, have the understanding of uh, uh the scripts and valuation so rather than going there they are coming to the passive investment mode so what is your feeling like so i think active and passive both are working together if you look at active mutual funds pms and aif their growth is substantially higher than pure passive index fund in passive funds epfo has been one large investor if you remove that out then retail interest is reasonably good but not as substantial as in active funds i think both will continue to work well for investors as long as we have fund managers like shrini and rajiv who will add value to investors by outperforming benchmark active will continue to work the day we are not able to add value then passive will take over i hope and pray that before i retire active and passive both will continue <laughs> that's great i think we know the, the 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 audience is very interactive out here they may have a couple of questions not more than that i mean so many hands are raising i think this gentleman here we can have a in the front uh good afternoon mr shah uh you said that the sensex which has come to about 75000 and more uh, one of the reasons is that profitability of companies have improved and it also means that the cash flows must have also have gone up significantly does that mean that the the gap between the intrinsic value of the companies who are listed in our stock exchange and the capital market value that gap has reduced a uh, very difficult to summarize for the entire market because there are pockets which are undervalued there are pockets which are overvalued but i will say that prices have also run up in line with the improvement in profitability and hence the gap will be more or less averaging compared to historical standards the large caps by definition the top 100 companies or top 50 companies are still trading around their historical averages mm -hmm. the mid caps are trading little above their historical averages mm -hmm. 
small caps are trading reasonably well above their historical leverages mm. and micro caps the bottom end of the market is trading well 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 above their historical leverages so depending upon which segment you look the gap has either narrowed widened or remained the same yeah so does does that mean that due to this digitization a lot of information have started flowing into the hands of the investors and the capital market as well so that should have reduced the gap in general because the understanding of the capital market if they don't understand some information they will go for a discount and therefore they will be you know more cautious in you know stating a particular price so information is flowing not necessarily wisdom lopia ho etya dutara bhukhe na mare wherever there are greedy people thieves business will only prosper they want to keep profits for them basically right see i think we have a lot Thank of you. questions we can all take it backstage you all know the one liners he mr shah is known for his one liners but not many of you know about the songs he likes to sing and he's going to sing something for us today let us hear from him so one i am not a professional singer to bhavnao ko dekhna gaane ko mat kisi ki muskuran hato pe ho nisaan kisi ke vaaste ho tere dil mein pyaar किसी का दर्द मिल सके तो ले उधार जीना इसी का नाम है आई थिंक दिस सॉन्ग एम्बोड इज मोस्ट ऑफ द म्यूचुअल फंड मैनेजर्स एंड पीपल यू आर टॉकिंग मोर लाइक अ दिल्ली वाला थैंक यू सो मच